Good morning, everybody. Hope you've had a fantastic day. It's a beautiful, sunshiny morning here in the Okanagan Valley. And more specifically, I am up on Dilworth Mountain. Uh, there's a little soccer field and I believe that's some sort of youth outreach facility. Yeah, it's a Y... A YMCA, I think, or a YWCA. Can't read the sign, but they do important work there, so good for them. Uh, <laughs> as you know, yesterday we didn't really get out much in the evening and see anything. Um, it was rather terrible weather, very, very heavy amounts of traffic, and it's early in the morning here on what is basically a busy residential road, and there's a lot of traffic already. So. Uh, it is Saturday today, for me. Uh, for you, this video will come out on Tuesday. And then tomorrow's video that I film will be out on Wednesday and so forth and so on until I lose my mind or run out of content. I think it'll be losing my mind that happens first. So, be sure to subscribe, because this is going to be a fun little adventure where we finally make good on the channel's title, which is Dan's Everyday Adventures. So, it's been a while that I've been working towards this. I've got enough of a, a base plan made up that I'm gonna give it a shot. And when I say daily, I mean it'll be five or six days a week, not seven days a week, because I'll need at least one day to catch up and edit, and some of my adventures take more than one day to fully achieve. So, we'll just have to kind of wing it from there. But today, we're going to head down and I'm going to check out the Mercedes dealership and the Audi dealership. There's a couple of things that I wanted to find out and I wanted to check out one vehicle in particular as I've just learned that, well, my father has decided that that's what he wants to pursue. So I'm going to go check it out for him. Uh, I, I'm a little more knowledgeable with cars than he is. He's better with money, I'm better with cars, if that makes sense. <laughs> so, we're gonna check that out, kind of get our, form an opinion on it without driving it, and then we'll just kind of see where the rest of the day takes us from there. So, thanks again for coming along, and let's hit the road. All right, guys, we've made it down here to the Audi dealership, <clears throat> and it's uh, still early in the morning, so they're not open yet, which is unfortunate, because makes it tough to ask questions, right? But. Anyways, uh, so my father has expressed an interest in an SUV about this size, so we're kind of comparing the, the luxury stuff. Now I've done a video kind of explaining the differences and stuff for what I was looking for, which is why I've ended up with a car. Because I'm, I'm not an SUV person, I, I've always loved cars, even though an SUV makes more sense for me, but anyways. Uh, so these, these are the Q7s by Audi, they're the, the full size, and then they have a Q8, which is I think just the three row version. I could be totally wrong about that. Anyways, these are quite nice vehicles. Uh, the Lamborghini Urus roughly shares the platform with the Q8, which is like, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's just this with an extra row of seats. If you know, let me know, because I'd love to. But, we'll get close here. I don't want to get too close and scratch up a new vehicle, and you probably can't see through the windows anyways, but very minimalistic, very kind of classy looking interior. Now, this is obviously used, and they have the wrong tag in there, because this is not an S3. <laughs> I, I would love to buy a Q7 for that price, which, yeah, they've got the wrong tag here, obviously. But when I was looking through the window there, I noticed this interior. And I don't know if it's just the white with the red, but I like that. Let me know what you think about that kind of color combo. Uh, and what else we got here? We got, oh, we got a Range Rover in the corner. That's sort of in the same category. This one's just a sport, but you get the idea. Oh, it's an SVR, so <laughs> never mind. This is a very fancy Range Rover. 
So this is an 18. It's got the full black on black. I don't know if this is paint or a wrap, but yeah. I also don't know what the price is. I do know that that's a supercharged V8 though. So it, it would not be on the less expensive side. And definitely not what someone like my father is needing. He is more after something that he can jump in and cruise from one end of the country to the other without having to worry about anything and not have a sore back when he gets there. That, that kind of sums up what my father needs in a vehicle. And it has to fit at least two sets of golf clubs. So, with all that in mind, we are going to wander over to the Mercedes lot, which has moved in recent months here in Kelowna. They used to be just kind of down the road that way, and now they're over that way somewhere. So, let's jump back in the car and see what they've got. Well, we've just pulled into the Mercedes dealership, and they've got quite the lineup right at the entrance. We've got ourselves a nice G-Wagon here. I'm just checking what it is. Oh, it is a 63. And an AMG. Yeah. See, I really like these. Nice interior. Very plain, basic, but extremely luxurious. Uh, twin turbo V8, so way too much power for what most people need. And at the moment, the price tags are going through the roof. Now that's my style. Nice big S-Class. A 580. I don't even know what engine that has. Yeah, that, that's your luxury cruiser that somebody drives you around in. Oh, we've got some people working already today. So, yeah, beautiful cars. And you don't see a whole lot of uh, station wagons around these parts. I love them. A lot of people don't. But I did spot the actual vehicle that my dad is considering. So we're going to go check that out. Get a nice view of it. It's this guy right here. And 2021, 2022s are roughly the same. Little, little differences. We are comparing the GLE 450 to a 450, because that's what he's after. Uh, this one is a black on black. Fairly well equipped. Hey, C8 Corvette. I mean, I was a fan of when they did the, the new grills. Some people aren't. Uh, these are a mild hybrid, and I don't know if that indicates anything in the grills. Uh, yeah, so 4,000 kilometers and it's worth $102,000. <laughs> uh, it's the wrong color spec. The, uh, the best spec for these, in my opinion, is the dark forest green and then either the dark kind of um, baseball leather interior or a cream oyster color, just because they look so classy and elegant. Now, uh, for reference, so that's the GLE. This is the GLC. You can tell they're a little different. And then that guy is a GLA. So that's essentially a big hatchback to a small SUV to a midsize SUV. And then the GLS is just slightly bigger and based off, obviously, the S-Class car over there. Realistically, the difference is just more room. And unless you've got a big family, probably don't need the extra room. Now, what else do we got hiding around here? Oh, another little GLA over there with a spoiler on it. And, oh, there's a coupe, excellent. So here is the coupe version of the GLE. Uh, basically the same car, just you lose a ton of headroom in the back, and I don't believe you can get a third row seat in this style. I think it's a cool concept, right? The whole kind of swept back coupe style roof line, but it does take away some of the practicality of why you're buying an SUV in the first place. Look at that screen in there. 
that is so cool and I love the dash accents. Uh, you can't see anything in there, but. So, personally, I would buy something with this styling, the coupe style, because it's more what I look for, but I don't need an SUV, so losing headroom in the back means nothing to me. However, somebody who's going to be carrying people, pa or, sorry, somebody carrying passengers and large amounts of stuff, yeah, you're probably going to want to stay away from the coupe. Uh, ooh, we got another G over here. This guy is another 63 AMG, white on, what do we got for an interior? Ooh, this is the right spec. So this one's a little older, probably still very, very expensive, because they all are. And I'll be honest, the G-Wagons, they're kind of one of the vehicles that's worth what they're asking these days, within reason, but. Uh, I'm gonna say this is probably early 2000s. I love that interior. Like that's, oh no, that screen screams like 16. Hmm. There's a tag up here in the window. I don't think it's anything to do with the car. No. I like this. So, if I ever win the lottery, that's going to be my winter winter vehicle, probably. <laughs> but now that's uh, that covers Mercedes and Audi. And I'll be honest, the North American competition, there's really only one vehicle that's in this kind of category. And that's actually a Lincoln. So we're going to head down there, check it out, and see just what the differences are that we can spot. All right, so we've made it down to Kelowna Ford Lincoln here, and they don't have any examples of the specific model I was after to compare against, but this is the Lincoln Nautilus. That is the Lincoln Corsair, and then one size bigger than this is called the, I forget. <laughs> so Corsair, Nautilus, one size bigger than the Navigator. Yeah, anyways. Um, yeah, they're, they're kind of that memorable, memorable right? Uh, oh, this one's sold. But, I mean, it's still a very classy looking vehicle. It's just not quite to the same level. Like, when we get into the interior here, it's very nice, but it's very Ford. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, right? It's just, when you're talking about spending $100,000 on a vehicle, you don't want to have the same switches that your F-150 had. So, because that one is sold, there's no window sticker in it, but the Corsair, I don't know if you can see the, okay, yeah, you can kind of see that. So this is fairly well equipped, it looks like, and it's 52. And I'll be honest, I actually like these. <laughs> it's uh, based off of the Ford Focus platform. So it's very much a little hatchback at heart, but then they make it taller, wider, bigger, and far more comfortable than the Focus. So if I were to ever consider an SUV, it would be something sort of like this, but I don't, I don't know. I'm not an SUV, guys. I didn't know they made a Ford Explorer ST. Let's look at this tag. So we have 2022 3 liter EcoBoost with a 10 speed for $70,000. And lots and lots of options and goodies on this thing. I had no idea they made an ST version of the Explorer. I knew they did of the Edge and the, um, well, obviously the Focus and the Fiesta, but yeah. So that's what Lincoln has to offer. They're more your everyday sort of vehicles. Now, for a little bit of backstory, uh, my father's been driving a 2014 F-150 EcoBoost. Uh, 
it is a platinum, so obviously there's a few features. And everybody else in the family drives Mercedes or Cadillac, and I think he got a little jealous, but when you drive a vehicle from basically brand new, uh, he bought it as a demo, I think, or off lease or something like that, and he's driven it since then, no real issues, right? Like regular maintenance and tires. That was about all he's had to do in eight, nine years. So why would you want to just shell out $100,000 for a new vehicle? Right? Well, now that truck is getting way up there in mileage. He doesn't need a truck anymore. So it's time to look for something a little more comfortable and enjoyable. And from what I know of the SUV market, we're talking the Mercedes GLE, the Lincoln Aviator. That's what it is, the Aviator. Uh, BMW X5, Audi Q7, Q8, um, the Cadillac, what is it, XT6 would be in that category. Uh, there's, I believe, a Lexus that would be in that category. But they just, when you actually drive them and you're used to driving a Ford or something like that, they feel very similar. And I know what he's after is something special, something exciting to kind of enjoy his, his, well, the rest of his life, right? There's no point in driving something boring. So my recommendation to him is gonna be the Mercedes, unless he wants to shell out big money and get into something like the Aston Martin or maybe even a Bentley, but that's talking much, much more money and well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think they might be, or they're probably not quite worth it. So, uh, now, obviously we've rambled on for quite some time here. It's still very early in the morning. Like, I mean, the dealership's not even open yet. And I've got a ton of stuff still to do today. So this will get broken up into two videos, just so that it's not an overwhelmingly long one for you. And we'll probably just cut it, I'd say, right about here. So, thank you very much for choosing to come along on this little adventure. Be sure you're subscribed because the rest of today's video will be out tomorrow. And then we're going to have another one after that, and another one, and another one. And as always, I will catch you on the next adventure.